Hello, I hope this day is finding you well. I'm Lisa Donahue, your host of Heart of the Matter, A Soulful Cure. The focus of this program is holistic health, creating the most optimal state of health for each and every one of us, mind, body, and spirit. And today, in getting to another Heart of the Matter, my guest is Sarah McGee. Sarah is the director of Pride's Young Artists, and we're going to talk about the power of performing in pandemic and our rich culture of the arts here in the Rutland region. Thank you so much, Sarah, for coming in. Thank you so much, Lisa. <laughs> I'm looking forward to this. So you're going to want to stay tuned and stick around because we're going to learn a tip or two, maybe something new, um, and how we can basically improve our lives. And you might want to fasten your seatbelts too. Sarah's, Sarah's quite energetic. <laughs> so terrific to spend some time with you. And I was wondering if you could just briefly tell us a little bit about your background in education. Excellent. Well, I'm Sarah, and I started, uh, lived overseas for many, many years, and then graduated from Castleton University, where I met my husband in the theater arts department. And then we moved to Boston, and then we moved to Michigan for 21 years, where I was a librarian and worked in five different schools doing theater arts, and then we started our own nonprofit, and then two years ago we moved here. I did not know that about you. <laughs> so you have, a, you have a tie to Castleton as well. I do. And I teach there part time. That's amazing. And my son goes there now. I know. <laughs> I love it when I bump into him, which has been rare with, given our circumstances. But um, I was really thinking about this show and the direction I wanted to take it along with you. And it goes without saying that we live in a very rich region for the performing arts. And I've made a short list, and maybe you can help me out with this, and then I have some questions for you. Um, so I've been here now 21 years, and when I think about it, my gosh, I've often said the Rutland region could really be a sub, um, like a, I don't want to say the word, but I'll say it, subculture for like another business economic opportunity around the performing arts, theater, costumes, staging, the proximity to Boston and New York, and now with the pandemic that we're all experiencing and reveling in the best we can, I thought, my gosh, maybe there's something here. So I just made a short list of things that I'm aware of, and I know there's others, and I do apologize for those I missed, but I think about the productions at Grace Church. These are in no specific order. The Paramount, Marble Valley Players, uh, the work that Saskia has done in the past with Rutland Youth Theater, and um, the Vermont Actors Rep, Merchants Hall, Jacob Patorti, Stone Valley Arts at Fox Hill, Horace Greeley Foundation, um, Theater in the Woods Camp, Pride's Young Artist, Music, Singing, Ladies Night Out, one example, The Really Big Show, Dancing with the Stars, uh, Cheryl Blodgett, so well known at Castleton for her choral and musical efforts there, Mill River Union, you know, if, the, if there was going to be a um, a certificate program for a middle or high school, I think that'd be our school. We've got the Rutland High School that does productions and other schools, Weston Playhouse, the Big Guns, uh, Dorset. Um, you know, I think about Jen Usher and all the costumes that she's made and her Make It So business, and it really takes a village. I also think of Drum Journeys of Earth. Where would we be without them and their colossal contributions to the fabulous Halloween parade and beyond? Uh, Sparkle Bond, Chaffee, myriad of dance studios. And that's not everybody. So and when you think about it, we, we should be really proud of ourselves. We should, and the fact that I can now sit here with you and have our name attached to this community, that's really exciting. That's exciting for me too. Um, and so when you think about it, how do the arts improve our lives and our overarching health in your opinion? Really, like when you talked about the holistic health, our mind, our body, our spiritual health, our centers, they're all fed by the arts. Yeah, mental, spiritual, social. Yes. The whole cadre. Yes. Mm -hmm. And it's an exciting opportunity. And when you can connect young people with that truth, and they will carry that with them in everything they do for the mm -hmm. rest of their lives. I remember when I was involved um, with the monologues that I was asked to be in. Again, that was another opportunity with Saskia Hagen Groom. Mm -hmm. I really realized how much I was out of my body mm -hmm. um, or how I didn't really trust myself enough on stage when I can have a, a, a decent, sparkly personality. Um, and so that just taught me an immense amount uh, in more than one way. And additionally, the material itself was very intense. And I had a small child at the time. Uh, Miles was just a little baby-ish. And uh, it, it really is so provocative on so many levels. Um, what's the one thing you wish everybody knew about the arts? 
that the arts is an opportunity for everybody that we can gather together and we can build that sense of community it's not a closed door it's an it's a it's a portal and it's going to transform your life when you're in it mm -hmm. and when you cross through yeah and and what's one thing you wish every artist knew Okay, I was thinking about this. I think that I wish everybody knew that their lives were like layers of cake, like delicious cake, like a rainbow cake. Mm. And there's, you know, your education, and then there's your work, and there's your family. But the icing that's inside, in between, that's all you. That's what you bring to the picture. Mm -hmm. And that's what we try to develop as artists, is that honest connection with um, our gifts, mm -hmm. and our acceptance of ourselves as a work of art and progress, mm -hmm. and then um, then trying to become a masterpiece in our own lives. Yeah, and what a beautiful cake example for inclusion <laughs> with the rainbow theme. Yes, I love it. <laughs> so um, if you're just joining us, my name is Lisa Donahue, and I'm your host of Heart of the Matter, A Soulful Cure, and today I'm speaking with Sarah McGee from Pride's Young Artists. So Sarah, who is Pride's Young Artists, and when did it start? And then I want to ask you what this drama llama stuff means. And incidentally, um, this year I, I unfortunately lost both my parents, and I was really trying to catch up with what was happening in the arts because we have a child that uh, is enjoying them very much, and we're so grateful for the plethora of opportunities, which I've already alluded to. So I was uh, checking out my Castleton email as a part-time instructor, and I saw this piece in August, like celebrating, you know, Pride Young Artists and Luke McGee. I'm like, well, Luke McGee, what's going on there? And that's how I even heard about this. So I was definitely uh, flying under the radar or something. So tell me, Tell me what Excellent. it's more about. Well, Pride started um, back in Michigan. My husband and I were working with different theater companies, and we really realized that there was, that we had a, a new voice, a new way we wanted to do this. So actually, Pride's is named after my grandparents' farm, Pride's Farm, oh. and actually in Vermont. Mm. And uh, it stands for Performance, Respect, Inclusion, Drama, Education. And it really is a community-building opportunity where we, we really wanted to, and that's why we call ourselves drama llamas, because that's everybody. That's the caregiver, that's the actor, that's the, the set designer. We're all in this one community where we are working towards a common goal, but it's our individual gifts that get us, that create the great art. You know, there was a beautiful line that I learned through the Rutland Youth Theater that there's no small roles as a new parent years ago, yes. um, only small people. And I really love that. Is there, is there anything that is uh, about the llama itself? The llama on my grandparents' farm. So they had a sheep farm. Okay. And they had some goats and they had llamas. And the llamas were, they defended They're the herd. They're defenders, yeah. Yep. They're really good, like little police men and women. Yes. And, and where other farmers would might be losing some of the flock to coyotes or other things, actually neighborhood dogs, really the problem. <laughs> um, <laughs> the, uh, the llamas were the ones that, that- Caretakers? Yes. Okay. And that's why we oh. went with the drama llamas. Hmm, well, it has a nice ring to it for sure. <laughs> what, <laughs> <laughs> what were some of the challenges of doing a production uh, in the pandemic? Because you're, you did it. We did it. We did Annie Jr. It was our first uh, production in the pandemic. And what was very interesting is now we've had to pivot because the pandemic has changed from this summer. Mm -hmm. um, and really, I think it all comes back to my youngest son was diagnosed with a terminal illness when he was one years old. And I learned mm -hmm. then that it's how we live, that we're not dying from disease, we're living with it. Dancing and with it. We're dancing with it. Yes. And I think that's what I saw the opportunity of the pandemic that we had to, um, we, we know this and we can show, we can show a way to do it. So the goals really are the same that the child you tr entrust to the program is the child you get back a healthy person who is nurtured has, you know, <laughs> no COVID and <laughs> yeah, and that's just how we get there is different. We yeah. wear masks. We have, uh, we developed, they're called smart art protocols. Little S-M-A-R-T, smart art. Very clever. Uh, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, very good. Um, so I have a question. Mm -hmm. um, 
How did Prides uh, address the health and safety protocols needed to protect their community? We took them all very seriously. We actually have um, a nurse on staff. She's one of our board members and she was very clear with us as new things were developed, as there's, there's precautions that you can take that are a little bit beyond, um, like no shoes, um, obviously wearing masks. Uh, this, in this production, all of the interaction with the characters and the actors, if they're inside, they're either wearing masks or face shields. Um, there's, it, it was amazing that how many times we wash our hands, how many times we, it's just being very intentional and being very cognizant of the ramifications of what could happen if you mm -hmm. aren't careful of the, your fellow community member. Absolutely, and I, I recall even with the tryouts, they were oh. done in, the, in the, the timed fashion. Yes. You've had to parcel and be really calculated and coordinated with in all of the practices. And, um, you know, it's, it's really been quite something. It really reminds me of when, um, two things, of uh, that visit from St. Nicholas, um, when they tore open the shutters and threw up the sash, the moon on the breast of the new fallen snow gave luster of midday to objects below, when to my wondering eyes did appear your production, like you, you were able to make that happen. Um, yes. And another very different example, um, since we're talking about mm -hmm. arts and theater and whatnot, is the TV show, The Monsters. When Herman was <laughs> on a diet and he had this one plate with one little pea on it, yes. and he's trying to be so good and he's just like reaching over to Grandpa and Eddie and Marilyn and Lily's plate and they all whip out like these industrial strength scissors and cut his fork in half. Like anything yes. you would try to do, it's like, okay, pattern interrupt. Yes. And that's, and <laughs> I love that. I love that analogy. And life is like that. It yeah. is constantly the universe, uh, it, it, the pandemic. It's all these little, they almost feel like roadblocks. <clears throat> My son's diagnosis. It felt like everything that I had been promised was shifting and was changing. And it took a long time for us to really come to accept that and be comfortable and confident in our new lives together. Mm -hmm. And, um, that, and you're right, like we, from auditions, we had, we have, oh, we have actors who we auditioned one at a time. We, our rehearsals, we limit our contact. We only meet twice a week. We meet for two hours. We don't meet, we have 43 actors in this production. They were never in groups larger than 12. Mm -hmm. um, and our space had uh, air filtration systems. It, you're right, there was, there's a million little things that we did to just mm -hmm. tweak it. And it was incredible to see how malleable and how brave and courageous our actors were. Oh my gosh, and how supportive the parents were. Absolutely, and I, and I also think, um, from what I understood, that there was an occasion um, where there were opportunities uh, with your son at the, at the production itself, and all of those gems that, again, shucking and jiving and accommodating, making things happen, and the learning experiences that everybody has. I love it. You know, oh. it's like, there you go. I there mean, go. it's right there. Life is happening right now, mm -hmm. and we can make it great. <laughs> yeah, we can. We can, absolutely. So if you were to ask one of the actors' favorite parts of doing theater in a pandemic, what would they say? Hands down, it's seeing their friends. Mm -hmm. It's my, one of my favorite quotes is when a parent said to me that their child felt like these were their people and you can just see them light up. They come in, we take their temperatures, you know, with their forehead, you ask the series of questions and then they enter the room. And even though we're standing on individual dots around the room and we're very mindful of our presence, they're connecting with each other in person. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's incredible. It is amazing when you think about the, um, the pandemic and all of our experiences, unrivaled, you know, the yes. word that is always used is unprecedented, so I need yes. to change it up. The unrivaled like realities that. where um, it's every time you turn around, I mean, there's so much fallout, there's so much of a gift, but when we think about um, the emotional stability, uh, the spiritual stability, the social stability, we think of the myriad of uh, obvious things that can roll also with different abuses because of the circumstances that happen in our lives or in people's homes. Um, it's it's really something. And I mean, I just was reading an article in the New York Times the other day, which was all about the adolescent anxiety and depression and everything. And 
I, I think that everybody was just like, game on. Oh, my God, salvation. There's an opportunity. Yes. And, 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 they, and they weren't going to waste it. Mm-hmm. And, that's, and that's what I've seen in their performances. They are just ready to unleash and connect. And it's... Um, it's beautiful, but it is when I look in their eyes, and that's one of the reasons we started this in March. We, well, we, what I'm seeing is trauma. These, these young people are experiencing signs of trauma mm-hmm. from the, the pressures of this. We all are. Yeah. The cracks are showing. Yeah, we're, yeah, on any given day, it's like, you know, I can be really on the ball and, and executing a lot of great stuff, and then the next moment I could be putting my mail in the freezer. Yeah. You know, it's just, it's just you <laughs> yes. know, it's cold today, so yes. that's why I'm saying that example. That's <laughs> what I could come up with. It's, yes. And we I've are, done that. <laughs> <laughs> and we are taping this show November 18th. Yes. And I know that, um, of course, you've seen some of this panning uh, if you're watching at home uh, or wherever you may be, that uh, Elf, the musical junior, I wanted to ask you what that was about. So we're taping this um, November 18th. And I think one of the things that was really astounding to me when you were sharing some of the community partners, but again, this is what happens and something that I want to ask you about shortly. So we had Miss Jackie's Dance Studio, Jacob Patorti, Merchants Hall. Mm-hmm. Jacob, when I, uh, I've lived here now 21 years, I may have already said that, um, you know, wow, a young phenom at a very, uh, very well-known uh, helping out. So that's great. So oh. he's had a little hiatus from New York or wherever he, he's been last. And um, yeah, that's, that's really fun. It was fun to see him the one day at drop-off. Oh, yay. Uh, Grace Congregational Church and Alistair. Yes. Um, Castleton University, Maya. Maya mm-hmm. Krause, I believe it yes, is. Yes, yes. And Stone Valley Arts at Fox Hill. Yes. So those are some of your, your uh, helpers. And uh, so tell me, what, what's, the, what's ELF about to you? Oh. Or in general? ELF is, oh, I just have to mention Miss Jackie's Dance Studio. As, I don't know if we did cover them. They have, yeah. oh, good. They have just been amazing, too. These community helpers have really helped Prides find their foothold and go move forward. ELF, and ELF is just like every production we we're trying to do for our full season. It's about finding yourself. It's about feeling accepted. Buddy the elf, he's a Santa elf. He does not realize he is uh, the tallest elf, the less <laughs> capable of all their little nimbled, nimbled fingered elves. He discovers that he is actually a human and he had snuck into Santa's bag as a baby and he was raised by the elves. And now he finds out that he is really a human. He has a father in New York City and it's time for him to find and connect with that father, with the family he never knew, and find out what it means to be human. So he's off to New York City, and he teaches everybody about the magic of Christmas. Well, we all love that movie when we've seen it with ah, Will Ferrell. So yes. that, is, that is great. I'm looking forward to it. And, you so, know, here's another example. It's like the, you know, the the constantly used phrase, the new normal, where yes. things are now on high definition, live streaming. So this yes. is like a whole nother frontier, which you probably obviously needed to learn. Yes. And here is the other compartmentalization where you're taping things and editing things and bringing things. And now people go online, which we'll mention at the end and purchase a ticket. It's like, you know, we're seeing movies doing this and, you know, cinemas that aren't allowed to have people. Um, it's fascinating. Just the the whole the whole change up. Yes. You know, it really is. So we know that's going on shortly. Um, Mm -hmm. November 27th is the show. But in keeping this uh, interview a little more timeless, what's the future for Prides? The future is exciting. We've actually launched our 2021 season. We understand that that season is might have to pivot. Uh, We already know that we are having auditions in December for The Little Mermaid. Mm-hmm. Uh, we will have production. We'll have rehearsals in January and February. We'll have the show in March. Whether it's streaming, whether it's, uh, we're ready. Mm-hmm. We're ready to accept the challenge mm-hmm. of whatever is safest and whatever protocols will keep our community as safe as possible. And then it's right into High School Musical Junior which will have auditions and then we'll have camps and then we'll move into that production. That'll be in May. 
In May, we're gonna flip the script this summer, and for the first time, we're going to have an opportunity for the young at heart, because it's Pride's young artists, so. Grown-ups will become the actors, grown-ups, adults. Okay. Yeah, old people. We're <laughs> gonna be the actors. <laughs> And the young people will be the directors, the producers. They're going to learn how to create arts opportunity. That is so, so great. I'm so excited. Hey, maybe I, I might have to check that out. You should. I could revisit that and see if I could improve. It's going to be Clue, and it's going to be great. It's yeah. <laughs> It's really a funny show. Oh, that's yeah. awesome. I, I, I'm I always so marveled with the uh, Dancing with the Stars. Oh, I've always wanted to be one of those yes. people that's picked. Um, I don't know. I'd have to probably get a knee replacement to pull it off. But <laughs> it's... <laughs> Seriously. But I just look, again, the the bevy of possibility that's here yes. and what I would call in wellness terms, the wealth under roof, oh. you know, and when you're talking about having to change it up and be in the moment, I think about that, that little quote, you know, be here now, or maybe another one, buckle up, buttercup, be here now, be here, wow, yes. because, okay, we we're going down this road and Herman yes. Munster's scissors come out again. Yes. Uh, so one of the things, as we already alluded to with the arts in our community, which we really should be just so proud of, um, there are so many amazing opportunities out there now for young people in theater alone. We'll just focus there. The arts at loud, large. How can we leverage all the groups and encourage comradeship and support actors as they make their decisions on where and when to try out, engage, given the options that now exist? Um, and I've learned uh, through you and other people what I would think like a female would be called an actress and a male actor, but now it's like actors. That's yes. the word you use. Um, yes. So how do you think that that, um, you know, might be, might be possible? When I first met you, it was two years ago around this time that Newsies was happening with the Rutland Youth Theater. Incredible. Yes. Hands down, sat down, cried my eyes out the first night because everybody was just so you know, on adrenaline and tired and ramped up as that all comes together at the end. And so I met you at that time. Yes. And, um, and, and you had some other experiences with um, Rutland Youth Theater as well around Frozen, Peter Pan, other workshops. How do you see this collaboration possibly taking shape? Because there's a lot of really great adults that are doing wonderful things. RYT, uh, Theater in the Woods Camp, yourselves, the schools. Yes. Maybe there's like a new new way to roll. Well, I'm sitting in this beautiful studio and I'm thinking just off the top of my head, we could start like a, a, a connect to art program, some way where we could all get together like I, we could uh, have a phone line that people call into like so that I would know what the schools are doing, what they would know what we were doing. Uh, with Rutland Youth Theater, oh my goodness, with uh, the, uh, the Paramount Theater. Yeah. And their productions. Yeah, they, their adult productions. Yeah, their adult, all of it. Like all when I was it. mentioning earlier about the Paramount, because, you know, um, of course, they're all doing that. Yes. You know, Eric and, and company, and they've done some amazing things. I mean, there's just, you know, I, it sounds possibly redundant, but there's been a lot of amazing shows and opportunities that have come through our region. Yeah. I can't say it enough. So maybe, maybe this is a harbinger of something new. I think the pandemic can be. I think that things that might look bad on the top change for the best, change mm -hmm. for the good, if you let it. And this is an opportunity. Mm -hmm. So I think, I think that's going to rest on our shoulders. I think we need to reach out to each other. Mm -hmm. I think we will reach out. And I will make sure that, there's, there, that we create something. Whether, and, and, and it has to be something not just on Facebook, not just on the different mediums, but something where we can connect. A little more real. Yes. You know, whether it has to be Zoom or, you know, the age old 1-800-conferencecall.com, whatever it may be, <laughs> because I would imagine also with parents, you know, we're all locked and loaded for the day and, you know, our lives are, are pretty, um, pretty scheduled and there may be two opportunities that look so delicious and how does one make a decision? Yes. And you want to support different programs, you want to support all the players, and you want to do your best by your son or daughter or maybe someone who, that you're a caregiver to, um, to reach their own goals and, and to make it happen. I mean, we can't like clone people, we can't like splice <laughs> people, but there could come up an opportunity Good. where we'll somebody wants to be in one production and they want to be in another because, or oh. some dance recital. We know that this group, is I won't say finite because I think it's pretty large, yes. but they've got one bag for this, one bag for that. They're in this, they're in that, they're in this and that. And I think it's, it's an opportunity to, to work more closely together. And, and I Absolutely. thought a lot about that this morning when I was, you know, 
preparing to come over here. Let's stay connected. I really think you, you are onto something. And I think that between, and how savvy our kids are mm. and how they're connected and all of these little apps and, and ways that I don't understand, <laughs> I think we are on the edge of something really big. I think it's like uh, when we think about work and how it's become more project oriented and parceled out where the younger people, like I'll turn 56 tomorrow, ancient. <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. Happy I birthday. made it. <laughs> November 19th, it just rolls off the tongue. It does. Um, when you think Aww. about people who are, I would say, in the 20s, 30s, 40s, they're used to more like having their work on a project, and then all of a sudden they're doing a dive roll and they're into the next group. You know, the years of working 30 years at one place still exist, but they're all so different. I've experienced that. I've often said my work in health promotion has been more like a patchwork quilt. You know, you take this, you take this, you take this, or you don't take it, you know, or you don't have it. You don't have the work. So um, the bottom line is, is that maybe that sort of idea could factor into here. Years yes. ago, I was thinking about what many people do very well, and, and I'll use your word very, um, in a very savvy way, mm -hmm. where it's, it's a bullpen. It's just, it's a community space where people come and do their work, but they don't work for a place. They are doing their own stuff, but they still want community and connection yes. and technology and maybe share the utilities or whatever. Those kinds of examples. Well, I think the, with the rec department mm -hmm. and, and how they, you know, they've they're partnering with all these different groups and how the Art Rutland Youth Theater is a part of the rec department. Mm -hmm. Maybe... I think the city is actually on the edge of that, the Paramount Theater, how they've pivoted into the, you know, they, they have their shows and fundraising shows. First show I ever saw in Rutland was the Lip Sync Battle. Oh, yes, and I, I forgot about that one. Blown away. It was in May. It was right after my, actually, my grandmother had just passed. We were talking. Oh. And I was visiting, and my aunt bought us tickets, and we all went. And I was watching the kids on the stage, and it never occurred to me that in two years I would be working with some of them. Wow. It's in the, it's, and I knew then what the arts community was capable of here. Mm -hmm. So we just have to get everybody on the same page, in the same room. Yeah, and finding, finding additional ways to do that. Yes. We, uh, time is an illusion. We only oh have a goodness. little over two mon minutes left. <laughs> I told you, fasten your seatbelts for today. Um, so how do people buy tickets for ELF? Okay, so the best way to buy tickets is you can visit us at pridesyoungartists.com and that'll bring you to a link for the show. The show is uh, streaming on a website called Web Ticks for You. But if you can find your way to our website, Facebook, they will link you right to the link so you can buy your ticket. $25. And the show will come straight into your living room. So it'll come into your living room. And given the pandemic where there isn't any, you know, right now family to family gathering through yes. December 15th. Um, so you buy one ticket and, and how many people could watch it? As many people are, you only get one ticket, one streaming device. Okay. So, but if somebody else buys it and we are a nonprofit children's theater company. So all that money goes right back into So it could be a tax write-off? Absolutely. Okay. Ah. ah hey, hey. Yay. No. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And and oh yeah, the holidays. Hey. That's right. That's okay. right. Hey. Um. So. <laughs> So it, it's, um, it's an opportunity to support us, and we appreciate that. And art does need, the audience is the last piece. To add. To add. Yeah. And without them, eh, you're in a bubble. That's right. You don't, have so, a, you don't have a show. So yeah, so check us out on pridesyoungartists.com or the Facebook, Prides Young Artists. Okay. And we're on Twitter and all that kind of stuff, too. All right. Well, you've done a marvelous job with all of your marketing, and as we wind down now in less than a minute... Um, how, in a nutshell, do you try to achieve some health and wellness in your life? I'm very not great at it, but I think by surrounding myself with really kind people, mm -hmm. I've been very blessed. And I think that's how, where I should probably wrap this up, this wonderful interview, and I can't thank you enough for coming on, thank is that you. I think now more than ever, we need to be flowing even more kindness. You know, it's not like a pixie dust, candles and sandals, rainbow unicorn deal, yeah. flowing more kindness and compassion because um, 
you know, there could be an occasion that any one of us could feel like they want to snap on a given day. Yes. And I, I think that's really what's going to continue to pull us through. I'm originally from Buffalo, the city of good neighbors, and I also think the Rutland community really uh, steps up when they need to. So I can't thank you enough for coming on the show. Thank you. And um, I'll just close with a Scottish proverb, what is for you won't get past you. Thank you.